Hi everyone. Okay, so um, I've been interested in exploring this uh, one idea to do with uh, evolution and um, how the future of the field should look. And um, it might be completely uh, off the wall, but I'm curious to get feedback from people who know more than I do. And just overall try and cohere thoughts and some uh, first narrative. So here's um, a try at that. So if you look at kind of the history of evolution, it's mostly built around competition. So you, you have kind of a population, one member of the population uh, mutates in a certain way that uh, turns into its ability to take over the full population or become more prevalent um, by sort of having increased individual fitness. And the thought there is that over time you see a population shift uh, to be in a state where uh, the average fitness is greater and the individuals that have uh, evolved better characteristics are more prevalent. And this is kind of a mechanism by which you can um, ensure over time the emergence of those individuals. The, there's, there's kind of a different way of looking at the world that I've been interested in. And I, I, I kind of would think about it in a kind of Thomas Kuhn paradigm shift uh, fashion where you know that, that that's kind of the first view of evolution and the second view is quite different in the sense that there's, there's kind of a different way to think about a, a sort of evolving function so you can talk about like increased fitness and evolution in multiple ways one is that an individual organism is better at replicating over time um, and so that that's one way and the second is that um, the, a group of individuals can interact in a way together that results in some kind of functional output um, at the group level and so that could be a bunch of bacteria in a biofilm uh, kind of interacting with each other. That could be a bunch of cells in a body um, kind of working together to achieve some function. But the, the, the group of replicating entities can form this population that does some kind of calculation or function that's very useful. Um, I think the interesting thing about that view is that the uh, sort of power and speed at which you can evolve function on that level seems naively to, be, to me to be much faster than that at the DNA level. So you know, if you take an organism and change a bunch of you know base pairs in its DNA, you'll you'll see kind of function in line with that. You know, probably fairly modest slow change, and maybe there's some major leaps. Um, you know, sort of the, the hopeful monsters that folks have talked about in the early 1900s. Um, but but it's kind of more gradual, and that's kind of what Darwin would have, would have spoken about. On kind of the larger scale, sort of population side, if you have one individual organism that changes its ability to do a certain function or to communicate information with other organisms, and that can replicate, you kind of have this ability to exponentially increase the capacity of that kind of first modification to be utilized um, in a way that to me kind of feels like parallel computing. Like you have one node, the node creates like multiple replicants, and then very quickly you have this exponentially scaled kind of system that can do a function. Um, and so I, I guess kind of like, I, this is a very naive kind of uh, question or thing that I'm trying to understand, but like, is the latter viewpoint one that's useful? Um, and would it cause you to ask different questions? So for example, when I started thinking about it, one of the first questions that I had was, um, does everything in the world that we know that is living communicate inside of its species? So it, do we know of examples of kind of living things that don't really um, kind of have the ability to exchange information between members of their same species? And as far as I can tell from just like a preliminary uh, sort of search, um, there, there may be a few obvious kind of like exceptions to this. Um, but this seems to be a much more prevalent property than I would have thought just naively from kind of not having really looked into it before. And it's also not one that really is, is sort of naturally coming out of like normal evolutionary theory. So like you, you wouldn't predict that everything on earth could within its own species kind of communicate um, just from kind of having um, a sort, sort of you know, known about uh, competition or the way that evolution normally works. Um, and so these are a bunch of kind of like, you know, semi-coherent, not really well-formulated thoughts um, but I'm just kind of interested in this general direction of, of kind of ways to think about evolution um, and curious kind of for what I'm sure would be kind of like a very long history of folks who've already thought about things like this, have literature to kind of support or refute different aspects of this way of thinking um, or, or kind of have like other um, kind of thoughts to, 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 put, to put into the mix. So I'm just putting this out in the ether as a very unedited, um, possibly um, an interesting video uh, to see if there are any kind of folks who have thought about kind of similar things in the past. Thanks and bye.